Hey there, welcome to Math 7, Unit 8, Lesson 19. Our last lesson, at least for me, for this unit and also for this school year. Oh my goodness. All right, so we have dot plots, histograms, box plots are different ways to represent data set graphically. So which of these displays would be the easiest to use to find each feature of data? So if I want to find the mean, I would probably go with something like a dot plot. Pretty easy to see where mean is there. Right, the dot plots are just like this, and you can kind of tell where's the mean. Pretty simple. If I want to find the median, uh, the box plot is the easiest, and that's because the box plot has a line, and where that line is is where the median is going to be. <laughs> if I want to find the mean absolute deviation, probably a dot plot's going to be the best there. In a quartile range, use the box plot because it gives you the lines there. And if I want to look at symmetry. A dot plot could work, but also a histogram could also work, right? That's going to be one that looks a little more like this. We have the boxes, and you see kind of where things go, all right? And you can see, is there symmetry or not? All right, so that's some ideas, just kind of wrapping those things up there. I'm actually going to skip the activity number two, because it's one you're going to do in class. It's a, um, it's a, one of the ones where your teacher's going to give you some cards to look at, info gap. You're going to have a problem card, your partner has a data card, and you need to ask some questions back and forth, forth um, to be able to solve and answer those questions there. So you can do that definitely with your partners and groups, if you're doing that today. I'm going to move over to the activity number three. It says a college graduate is considering two different companies to apply for a job. Acme Core lists this sample of salaries on their website. So 45, 55, 140, 70, 60, and 50. What typical salary would Summit Systems need to have to be meaningfully different, meaningfully different from Acme Corporation? And explain your reasoning. Okay, so when we take a look at the data right here um, from this group, it's not in order, first of all. So I'm gonna go ahead and first of all put it in order. So I actually have a 45,000, I have a 50,000, I have a 55,000, a 60,000, a 70,000 and a 140,000. Okay, so that's a lot of values right there. So for it to be meaningfully different, I need to kind of figure this one out. Now, I have a big number out there. Because I have that big number, if I use a mean, my mean's gonna be too high. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a median value. Median's gonna be in the middle, right about there. So what's between 60 and 70? Uh, 60 and 55. So I do 60 plus 55 and I divide that by 2. My median is $57,500. That's my median value. Alright, so if you're talking about like a box and whisker plot kind of thing, right? That's the median. Now then I would then, you know, thinking about kind of where things are, that's the median. My quartile range is what's kind of mid midway through. So this becomes 50 is there, splitting it 70 is there. It's so my inner quartile range looks something like this. Okay, those are kind of my values, how that works out. Something along those lines, got it? So this is quartile one, quartile three, and that's my range there. So if I'm talking about um, you know something that would be different, my, my IQR, my inner quartile range is the difference between Q3 minus Q1. In this case here, it's 70,000 minus 50,000 for a total of $20,000, okay? So I need to have something that's gonna be two, uh, two times that, okay? Why two times that? Well, because I need to make sure that it's gonna be away from that. So if I do 20,000 times two, that's 40,000. That's how far away it needs to be from the median of this one. So then I add that back to the mean, which is 57,500. And we find out that where it should be to be significantly different, it should be about $97,500. Now the reason with that is because then if I subtract $20,000, I'm not gonna have overlap. I'm trying to have no overlap. That's the idea. So. To be significantly different, I'm going to multiply by 2 because, again, doubling it up or times 2, that's that, that's that value we're looking for, being greater than 2 times. That's the difference we're looking for there. Don't have to figure it out. I just want it to be bigger than that. Okay? So that's the idea. A factory worker number 2 is wondering whether they should upgrade their equipment. 
The manager keeps track of how many faulty products are created for each day of the week. Uh, so here's the faulty products. The new equipment guarantees an average of four or fewer faulty products. Okay, awesome. Uh, is there a meaningful difference? So for this one, I'm going to probably want to use more like a mean, right? I'm going to want to find the mean absolute deviation for all this fun stuff here. So first of all, the mean of the whole data, when I add all this up, the mean is going to be, in this case here, when you add this together, we end up with 46, we divide it by the number of items, which is 7, and we have 6.57. Is that right? Yep, 6.57. Okay, so that's my mean. All right, that's my mean. Now, to find the mean absolute deviation, I gotta do some more work here. So we have to find how far each one of these is away from the mean. So six, again, remember, remember this is gonna be six minus 6.57 absolute value of that, which is gonna be in this case here, 0.57. And we're gonna add that to seven minus 6.57, which is 0.43. Add that to 8 minus 6.57, which is 1.43. And then we have 6 minus 6.57, absolute value, to get 0 0.57. 7 minus 6.57 is 0 0.43. 6.57 minus 5 is 1.57. And 7 minus 6.57 is back again to 0.43. Now when I add those all up, plus sign, plus sign, plus sign, plus sign, I end up with 5.43. And to find the mean absolute deviation, I'm going to do 5.43 divided by the number of items, which was 7. So my mean absolute deviation is going to be 0.77. Uh, Is that right? Yep, 0.77. That's my mean absolute deviation. OK. So my mean absolute deviation is, is 0.77. So that's awesome there. Um, and then when we take a look at our so I now have an average or mean for the data here which is 6.57 oops 6.57 and I have the mean of the new product which is 4 so the difference of means is 6.57 minus 4, which is going to be equal to uh, 2.57. So now I'm going to take that difference of means, 2.57, I'm going to set that equal to whichever one has the uh, the or the greater um, uh, the greater mean absolute deviation, which in this case we just have the one. So I'll set it to 0 0.77, the mean absolute deviation. So difference in means equals mean absolute deviation times some value. And whatever that value is, remember, if it's greater than 2, then it's a meaningful meaningful difference. So when you do 2.57 divided by 0.77, you end up with 3.33. So 3.33 is greater than 2, so it has a meaningful difference. And that's what we want to see. All right, so just in summary, when comparing, when using samples to compare two populations, there are a lot of factors to consider. S are the samples representative? Is the sample biased? Okay, we have to look at the centers, the variability. What are the comparisons there? There's lots of things we look at there. Knowing the correct questions to ask when trying to compare groups is important to properly correctly interpret the results. All right, so good luck with your homework. We have one more set to go, so here we go. All right, an agent at an advertising agency ask a random sample of people how many episodes of a TV show they watch each day. The results are shown in the dot plot. So we have lots of ones, twos, and threes, and then some people way out here watch TV all day long. The agency currently advertises on a different show, but wants to change um, this one uh, as long as the typical number of episodes is not meaningful less, no, meaningfully less. So what measure of center and measure of variation would the agent need to find for their current show to determine if there's a meaningful deviation? Okay. In this case here, I would recommend that they use the median. 
and the inner quartile range. Okay, um, it's just I don't know. I just think it's probably a little bit better here. And the reason that I would do the median is because it's not symmetric. Right? These values here are going to make the mean a little off. So I wouldn't use a mean because of those two values there. So then when I organize those things out, you know, I can look and say I have five one values. So it looks like this. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I have a three, a three, a three, and a ten, and eleven. So when I look at all that, my my median here of the values, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, it's going to be at 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is my median value right here. That's my median value. Okay. My median value is at 2. And then I look and say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4. This becomes my quartile 1 right there. So my box is going to go out to here. Then I'll go out for this way, one, two, three, four. All right, so this is quartile one, quartile three, and then I'm going to extend this out to here and to here. All right, so just based upon this data, most of our data falls within quartile one and quartile three using the median there. My, my IQR is going to be three minus one, which is two. So anything within two is going to be a, a good value. And we can see almost all those values are within that range, with exception of 10 and 11. OK. So what are the values for these same characteristics in the, in, for the data and the data plot? OK, well, we did that already. We did the median is 2, 2, and our IQR is 2 as well. So what numbers for these characteristics would be meaningfully different if the measures of variability for the current show is similar? And explain your reasoning. Okay, so um, for us here, we're saying for it to be meaningfully different, um, we'd be looking for something that's going to be, uh, if we take the IQR and multiply it by 2, you end up with 4. So if you had something that was the 4 plus the median, and you had six, okay. So six episodes uh, in this case here would be significantly different, right? Because if you had a plot, and just think about your picture back here. If you plot a six over here and that became the new median, that's significantly different. These values are significantly different there. So that's what you don't want to have there. So that's the idea. So you double the IQR, get you your four, and you add that back to the median, and that's going to put you place where you're not overlapping like you should be. All right, number two, Jada wants to know if there's a meaningful difference in the mean number of friends on social media for teens and adults. She looks at the friend count for the 10 most popular of her friends and the friend count for 10 of her parents' friends. She then computes the mean and mean absolute deviation for each sample and determines there's a meaningful difference. Jada's dad later tells her he thinks she has not come to the right conclusion. Jada checks her calculations and everything is right. Do you agree with her dad? Okay, so there's two things happening here, right? So. Her calculations, the calculations are probably correct, right? She did the math right, correct math, that's good. But the thinking and the sample is what's wrong. That's where she made her error. Now the reason I'd say she made her error there is her samples aren't random. Remember we want samples that are random. So you don't just pick the 10 most popular, you just pick 10 people. You can't pick the popular ones. When you pick the popular ones, you've changed your data. It's now biased. And that biased is going to be something that's going to throw your data off and not make it accurate. So that's where she made her mistake. I'm sure her math was great, but because she had bias in her sampling, bias in her data, and it wasn't random, then the results are not accurate. Let's look at number three. All right, the mean weight for a sample of a certain kind of ring made from platinum is 8.21 grams. The mean weight of a certain kind of ring made from gold is 8.61 grams. Is there a meaningful difference in weights of the two types of rings? Um, well, we really don't have enough information. Okay, we would say not enough information given. I don't know what the mean absolute deviation is here, so I really can't compare the means. I can't compare two means if I don't know the mean absolute deviation. There's not enough information. 
And finally, number four, the lengths in, ra uh, in feet of a random sample of 20 male and 20 female humpback whales were measured and used to create a box plot. Estimate the median lengths of male and female humpbacks based on these samples. So the male is this one here, and we direct take the median, and we drop down to here, and we're going to be about, that's 45, so maybe 44.5 feet. And the females find their point here, it comes down to this point there, so almost a 51, so maybe 50.8 feet there. And those are our median lengths there for that one. And that is it. That is it for today and it for everything. Thank you for watching this year. I hope to see you back next year for Math 8. Good luck.